Hello, family. I did not know God told me as I was working on my notes for Colossians that I'm going to be taking a break this week. I needed some time of rest. And uh, I didn't actually, I wasn't sure if he's going to have a smaller word outside of the regular Mondays and Fridays. And I've just been dwelling in his presence and, and seeking his, you know, through him through our relationship and uh, matter of fact he had something today to share that he's been speaking to me on which I feel is of vital importance and uh, let's pray first Father God it is through you whom we have our strength renewed and you will have a sore like eagles if we put our trust in you if we wait on you to see how we must react so we will not fall weary I just ask that you just anoint my lips and my tongue and, and that it is you who will speak for you give the strength and the power and it is you who speaks truth. For I know nothing on my own. Spread your word. Let it be heard. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Alright. So we have these times, right? Where we're just worn out and drained. And the word actually speaks on why. Because our rest should be in Christ. And yet, what drains us? What, what, what brings us down so much that God just has to be like, okay, you, you got a little too drained, you, you need to take some time. Why is that? Well, Let's look at the word. In 1 Corinthians 11. It's starting at verse 27. Paul is sharing about how people are dishonoring the, the blood and body of Christ. And that there's consequences of it. And within dishonoring them, it's not only dishonoring those who Christ is forming into the image of God but also those who he has chosen that we are unaware of because we, we've been speaking how like in Psalm 119, 136 how, how he weeps for those who do not live according to God's law he, he, he's not filled with anger but he's weeping and we must grow into this because because our human reactions our lack of reliance on the Holy Spirit quenching the spirit relying on our own strength that's what destroys us that's what drags us down here let me show you whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup for anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself let, let me put, put one thing with that first what is the first part of the blood in the body of Christ when Christ took us see if I if I could be made right with God by keeping the law Christ need not to die he took people out of the darkness and brought them into the light and if I am constantly condemning 
and mistreating and rebuking people outside of that fact. I am already forgetting what Christ done through his body. I am forgetting the purpose of why we partake of this communion. So I am already drinking judgment. Because I first am the one who needed judged. I did not deserve to even partake of this. And yet I want to belittle someone else. So. That is why. Many of you are weak. And ill. And some have died. Right there. Many of us are weak. Our lack of self-control. Our lack of turning to God. When we are facing someone or a brother. Yeah, I, I realize that maybe it's your spouse or your kids. Or, or someone you're witnessing to. And they they could just get a little rowdy, right? Who are you to, to fall into that sin with them? No. You, you should stop instead of quarreling or anything else. Stop. And I speak this to myself because that's part of it. Why, why I got drained. You know, just, just starting to be like, what? What do you need? You know, just, uh, and just getting drained without just calling upon the Lord to strengthen me. I feel weaker because of it. And, that's that the, the very thing. Look, the, that is why many of you are weak. We must be very careful. We we think that we're dealing because perhaps I have this relationship with the Lord, so I'm constantly strengthened because He lives with me. No, that's not how that works. That is not how it works. We must call upon Him in all that we do. And if we go upon our own strength, that's why we end up weak. But there's more to that. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So this, this whole process... Of feeling this defeat and, and, and despair and worthlessness. Uh, and just dragging. Like I don't have enough strength. I can't focus on you. And see and that's, that's part of the prayer too. If we would properly examine ourselves. And, and, and judge ourselves first before we say or do anything. I mean how many times are you trying to spend time and dwell in the presence of God. And you're so first so focused on your problems and your mistakes and your needs that you can't hear his will. See that's that's why this is so important. We need to be sure that let's look at Revelation three nineteen. Those whom I love are reproved and disciplined. So be zealous and repent. Is it get into this process of, of becoming very zealous to, to I need to push through. I need to hunger and thirst for your righteousness. I need to be careful how I walk, saving both myself and my ears. And so I can go before you not to just mope the whole time, but rather just Build a relationship and hear and listen and learn. And so, and part of that, see, let's back up to, to an earlier verse. It says, but in the following instructions, I do not commend you. Because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. Look. 
Sometimes when we gather together or we're having fellowship, we think, hey, this is our strength. But because we're not judging ourselves first, it's actually our weakness. It's for the worst. Because we are going before, like it says, reconciled before your bro- or to your brother that has a problem with you before you go give your gift, right? You, it can be worse because if we're not going before the Lord first, we're dishonoring the Lord. And as we dishonor, we start to feel weak, ill, and die. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. This is the first this is the first thing that Paul this is the beginning of First Corinthians. The verse is ta- he's talking about the wisdom of God, to rely on the wisdom of God rather than the wisdom of this world, and that he uses those who seem like nothing at all to shame those who think they are wise. That's how he starts, and then he's talking about people thinking they're right with God just because they follow a teacher, and and they dismiss others because they don't follow that same teacher. They they feel like they don't need them. So that division is is there. See, he's saying that's that's that first. This this is the first thing I want to speak on as you're dishonoring the body, and you're going through these moments of you know burnout. But look, let, let, let's look at this part. And I believe it in part, for there must be factions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. So who's the genuine? The ones who constantly condemn and attack and look for every single... Look, what were the Pharisees? The Pharisees lived by a bunch of laws they created and condemned people who did not follow them. So do you think that those who constantly nitpick little itty bitty things and dismiss a a teacher because of it or someone trying to share the word of God because of it, that they're the ones who are genuine? No, because they're already dishonoring the blood and body of Christ. It's him who strengthens and works in us to bring us into the truth. So, and and those who cause divisions are the ones who are not genuine. Yeah, there must be factions, but it's in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. And it's those who are pushing to rely on the spirit and not by human understanding as those who constantly say you must examine yourself judge yourself first and that the lord will discipline us because if if you're not facing that discipline if you're not being renewed you will be condemned with the world god is doing this process so you will not be just because you call upon his name means nothing Let's look at Psalms. Let's actually, before I go to Psalms 38, let's look at John 5. First, Jesus is saying, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge. My judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So we look at that first, and it's Jesus is saying, if, Je- if this is Jesus' mindset, I mean, he's got the power of God upon him. Remember, he came down to become a slave to all men, not to cling to being from God. So he could automatically, because of his power and his, his deity, deity, he could instantly you know, judge and criticize and do it. But no. He set himself apart. He sent time and prayer. And seeks what the Lord says. See. But the will of him. Not my own will. I'm not going to go on by my own strength. 
See, the more you do that, the, the often we're going against the will of God. And then you're quenching the spirit. And then you feel overwhelmed. Um, so I'm looking over, looking to John 5. So let's look at 37. John 5, 37. All that the Father gives me will come to me. Oh, wait. Sorry, I'm in the wrong spot. John 5, 37. Okay, I was moving forward, not back. All right, there we go. We're good. And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. His voice you have never heard. His form you have never seen. And you do not have his word abiding in you. For you do not believe the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures. Because you think that in them you have eternal life. See, and there we have a lot of people to do that. You're like, oh, I read my Bible. I don't, I don't need an interpreter. I don't need the Spirit of God. I have my Bible. I can read the Bible. I'm good. As long as you do that, that means I'm right with God because this is His truth, right? No. You search Him, and that should lead you to Christ. And if that leads you to Christ, that leads you into being where He's at, being with His disciples, learning from His disciples as we learn from Him. Working together as the body. Relying on the spirit to understand what God says rather than your flesh. See, there's so often we are more looking. We are, we are stopped from understanding of the word of God even when someone's trying to share it. Because we are looking for defaults in what they're saying. Rather than just trying to listen and hear the Spirit, what He's trying to say. I mean, we we need to start waiting till the end and then asking God about it. So, but let, 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 let's look. You search the Scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive glory from people. But I know that you do not have the love of God within you. I have come in my Father's name. And you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. There's a lot of people. People claim, you know claiming the love and the mercy of God and they're not received and yet we go into a you know a church that you grew up with or you, you know you've been a part of that your 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 family got you caught up into and they could come I mean we praise the pastor more than give God glory. We get caught up in their name. We we talk more about being Baptist or Mormon or whatever, Catholic, more than a, a, a child of God, a servant of Christ. If another comes in his own name, you will receive it, and we receive them. And that, that's not just in the church world, but I mean, you say you're a counselor or a doctor, you receive them no no problem. I mean, even if they goof up, we could say, well, they're a doctor, they'll grow and they'll figure it out. You know, they'll, they'll get better at it. But we don't treat that way with the servants of the Word of God. We're ruthless. How can you believe... When you receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God. 
Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, on whom you have set your hope. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Right here, this is that whole thing. We say that, oh, it's the person condemning us. Those, those who are using the scripture, the words of God. No, you're condemning yourself. You're not believing. You're, it, it's, it's Moses who accuses you. It's the author of the word. Because, look, on whom you have set your hope. Who are you setting your hope in? See, that's the thing. We got more faith in the programs and teachers and all this than we do in Jesus. Our strength is in the one we're listening to rather than the one who actually gives us strength. The one who gives us all that we need. The one who gave, gave us the gifts. We are so connected into our resource being the teacher of the Word of God. And, that, and most of our correction is based on what that teacher taught us, rather than stopping and be like, Holy Spirit, what do you say? What are your thoughts in this? We, we we can't get to listening to Jesus because we get so focused on listening to our teacher. And we start to rely on them and not Christ. I mean, it, it's good to have a teacher. That's part of it. A, pa a pastor. That's, that's part of God's order. But if it's a good pastor, he's going to tell you to learn more from Christ. Yeah, I'm going to share this, but go home and dwell in the presence of God and learn from Him. Because he, He's going to give you, I'm just a man, He's going to give you deeper understanding that I can't give you. And speaking of that, see, and that's, that's He says that we should follow the example of Christ. That's what Christ says, follow my example. He came to set an example. And that example is do not do anything on your own. As I hear, I judge. As you hear God, not, not anybody else. Just stop trying to receive glory from people. Because that shows you don't have the love of God. You think that you're such a great... People can think that they're so great from teacher because, because all these people are floodgating into them. And, and, and proclaiming that they they the truth. No. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another? No, I have to look to the Father. Do not seek the glory, and do not seek the glory that comes only from God. We got to ask God, hey, how am I doing? Am I reacting to this person as I should? Am I treating them as I should? Am I understanding your word as I should? Or am I searching the scripture and missing everything you're trying to say because I'm not seeing you in it? I'm seeing me in it. Let's look at something, and this is going to go right with what I'm sharing. And I pray that the Spirit guided me to, uh, I don't use the Amplified Version, but in this verse right here, I'm going to. And you know, that goes right with this. 
you can dismiss this because I'm not using the translation that you would typically use right here. Or, and, and, and your judgment is based on your own strength. Which, I tell you, that's, that's the point of this. That makes us weaker. That's, that's what drains us so much. Because we want to go off what our mind, what, what, what man has taught us, what tradition, what these laws of men said. Just like the Pharisees. And we miss the true teachers of God because of it. So I'm using Amplified because there is a little bit in what I'm about to share. They have little excerpts in between. I'm going to read the full thing and then read the excerpts. So then, this is Philippians 2. My dear ones, just as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, Continue to work out your salvation with awe-inspired fear and trembling. For it is God who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. See, now let's, let's, let's look at the little excerpts here. So when it says... Just as you have always obeyed my instructions with enthusiasm. I share that because there's just like, oh, okay, I'll do it. And then there's enthused because if you start to get enthused as you obey, I mean, the instructions, that's the work of God because the Spirit is, ex is an excitement to do the will of the Father. And when we don't feel that excitement, if we're just like, I guess, I mean, it, it starts to chuck away at us. When we're, when we're not excited to do the work of God, and and part of us is fighting against it, us, that just causes fatigue. But God is working where we're excited. It's like, man, we're going to do the work of God. We're doing... As God wants us to do. I mean, that's it's exciting. We're, we're and getting excited to even look into the Word. Rather than just like this again. You know, we don't even know. We, we think these are all just simply commands. But we don't realize the benefit. And part of this benefit is... Is, is joy. Part of this benefit is so that we don't feel tossed by our sin and, 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 and so that we can move day by day, glory to glory, without feeling defeated. And we, and we got to have a realization of that. So now the next part is continue to work out your ex salvation. And the excerpt there is that is cultivate it. Bring it to full effect. Actively pursue spiritual maturity. Working out actively pursuing spiritual maturity. So the more we grow into the maturity, and I'm not talking about being in the church so long, or no. Maturity of reliance of God rather than the flesh. To grow into the fruits of the Spirit rather than relying on the ways of the flesh and to rely on those fruits growing into that maturity that's what it brings you strength it strengthens you more and more and you'll have less down times because of it because you're able to handle more um and then after it says inspired fear and trembling using serious caution and critical self-evaluation to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of Christ see see it, it, it's him working and we need to obey into that and continue to work to cultivate it to you know to examine ourselves critically 
knowing that if I'm not living accordingly to the blood and body of Christ, that I'm offending God and I'm discrediting the name. How I treat my brothers and sisters in Christ, I may be discrediting God or offending his name without even realizing it and then wondering why I keep going through this, you know, hardship against myself. These, these, if, it, it almost feels like self-afflicted wounds. Like it says, First Corinthians 11, disarm, that's why I say, died ill, right? Weak. Let's see, um, And then, for it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you. It is his strength that works in you. Your strength weakens you. God's strength brings forth a fire. But, and then it says, that is strengthening, energizing, he, both to will and to work, right? That is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose. The longing and the ability. See, he's got to strengthen and energize us to do so and create in us. Because we don't have that longing Sometimes we just do the work of God because we want what we get out of it. But God wants to work it in us that we long for it because we want to reflect the heart of the Father. And that's that's what he's trying to work in us because, you know, Pharisees, everybody else, they missed it. And, and, and often we feel miserable because... We're just doing it to get by. We're doing it for security. And it's through the love of God that we feel peace. That that we can, you know, like it says in uh, Thessalonians. Or Peter, I, I can't remember which one it is. But to do, I think it's First Peter 5. To... Uh, look after the body of God willingly, not grudgingly. Not for what you get out of it, but because you're eager to do the will of God. And and that's what he that's where you build up into it and you're just joyful. But and you could just grow deeper and deeper in that. And you can continue you could do more work the more you work yourself into this. You can glorify God more. You, you, our lack of focus and devotion to it more than likely causes us to miss so much that we need to learn through others and through through God and also missing out there's possibly work or people we were supposed to reach. But because we are dragging our feet and not calling upon him as we should we are rather than bringing glory to God we're, we're offending God and discrediting his name um, and then that goes to the next part it says do all things without grumbling or disputing that you may be blameless and innocent children of God, without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life. So look, look at this. What causes us to not live into all this in Philippians and examining and, and, and growing into maturity is the grumbling and disputing. And we don't feel blameless. We don't... See, it's, it's through our 
time in the presence of God that we we face that blamelessness and that innocence that that we get filled up but if you are going if you have to constantly go before God because all your failures you're never going to get filled up because you're talking more about yourself than listening and the more we stop grumbling and disputing and we just move through God the more we can dwell in his presence and get filled up more because we can do it with a clear conscience and all this without blemish in the midst because all of this is for this purpose because we are going before a crooked and twisted generation and we are called to be to shine as lights in the world and the world should see us holding fast to the word of life not looking like hypocrites but we are living into this word of life because we're not just searching the scriptures we are relying on the one who spoke it who that can bring it to fruition in our hearts and in our lives. And speaking of shining as lights in the world, let's look at Psalm 18, 28 through 29. For it is you who light my lamp. The Lord my God lightens my darkness. See, if you don't have that right, and you are pushing and destroying a brother and sister in Christ, that means you don't have this right. It is Him who lightens our darkness. It is Him who lightens their darkness. For it is you who light my lamp, the Lord my God. The Lord, my God, lightens my darkness. For by you, I can run against the troop. And by my God, I can leap over a wall. He gives us the strength to do it. He's the one who takes out the darkness of it. He's the one who shows us how to expose the darkness and he shows us how to bring it to the light. He gives us the strength to go over whatever mountain we need to go over. And he gives us the strength to go against a troop of darkness or whoever. And stand strong. But... Who are you going to at those moments? Are you remembering what God has done in your life in order to do so? See, I was asking God. <laughs> I found this so interesting. I was like, is there anything else that you need to, need to add to this message? And he was like, look down. I was like, what? Uh, this shirt right here. It is Son Isaiah 40, 31. It's on the shirt. And he said, this, this is... And this is... What... <laughs> I put this on after work and, and didn't know I had a message. And then within it, he's like, look down. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might. He increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted but they who wait for the Lord 
shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So I tell you, God does not faint or grow weary. He has all understanding. And we don't. And we have to understand that. You want to understand people. You want to come forth. You want to connect. We have to stop doing it in our own strength. We got to stop judging people in their walk in our own strength. We got to stop reacting to people in our own strength. You wonder why you keep growing weary. Because you're not stopping and asking God to help you respond first. We think we are so righteous in some situations. Maybe because we search the scriptures. But no, it should lead us to Christ. And and leading to Christ is he had to die for us. To give us the power and the strength. To actually get us to, to live according to him. To give us the love. And to overflow in that love. That we cannot receive on our own. To give us the patience that we cannot receive on our own. It is only by His strength. And He gives power to the faint. And to Him who has no might, He increases strength. You call upon Him. You keep going on your own power. And you, you, you don't go to him and you wonder why you keep growing into these moments that make you feel so guilty. Growing through these moments that just make you feel more angry. Uh, and that makes you want to attack people. Because you keep doing things based on the doctrines of men and not based on God based on your human understanding and tradition and not based on God you want strength stop looking for it in yourself and young men shall fall exhausted but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength you wait on the Lord. Dwell in His presence. Call. Don't instantly react. Like it says in James, be slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to get angry. Call. Wait on the Lord. Know that it destroys us when we act on our own accord. But we shall mount up with wings like eagles and run and not grow weary. Walk and not faint. Because we're waiting on the Lord. We're, allow we're allowing Him to renew our mind, to renew our strength, to, to bring the rebellious thoughts to obey Christ. Not us, but Christ. If you want to serve God daily, toil day and night like like Paul did, you have to trust in the Lord. You have to give it to Him. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. Our ways weaken us. His ways strengthen us. His ways strengthen us when we're weak. And it, it work, He works best when we're weak. But if we're weak and we're not calling upon Him, we are putting our, in ourselves in a place of uselessness. 
a place where we need to take more time off to be replenished. We need to be patient with difficult people. And that patience comes from the Lord, not from us. We need to pray from people. And that willingness to pray for the difficult and the enemies and those who lack understanding comes from the Lord, not from us. We cause our own destruction and never realize it. And then we go to man to cure it. When we could examine ourselves, the Lord will show us and we could glorify him and tell him, hey, I keep trusting in myself. I keep going about what I was taught than what God, rather than what God's trying to show me. I, I, I can't break this in any deeper. No longer live by your strength. Christ died so we no longer live for ourselves. Christ died so it is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. You need to rely fully on the Holy Spirit for everything. Otherwise, you will feel like you can do nothing. And just lost in thought where you can't fully hear him. Let us pray. Father, dear Lord, I thank you. I thank you that you give us wisdom. Well, no matter the circumstance, whether we're in our highs or our lows, you teach us, you show us, you give us something that strengthens others who may face the same thing. And I just ask that you get all the praise and glory and that we start to realize that our actions may glorify man, when our actions may glorify man rather than you. I would just ask that we become zealous through what we learn to serve and devote ourselves to you. It's just ask that people would, would, would listen and receive this and share it and give thanks to you and turn to you to give themselves the strength needed to overcome. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Alright, God bless y'all, love y'all. Have a good night.